<laughs> All right, I'd like to go ahead and welcome everybody to the Tuesday, March 19th, Warrington Board of Aldermen meeting. If you would, please rise and say the Pledge of Allegiance with us. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next will be the consent agenda. We have the regular meeting minutes from March 5th, 2024. I'll entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda <clears throat> items as submitted. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Cullum, seconded by Alderman Rowmaker. Roll call vote. Alderman Miller? Yes. Alderman Scholes? Yes. Alderman Crump? Yes. Alderman Quarter? Yes. Alderman Cullum? Yes. Alderman Rowmaker? Yes. Motion passes 6 to 0. Next will be public comments. If you'd like to address us with any issues or talk to us about any issues, please come to the podium, state your name. We'll give you five minutes to speak. Welcome. Hello, my name is Sarah Collins and I am here to talk about the proposed development off of um, the Forest Ridge subdivision area. Um, I am a resident who lives right right there. Um, we own one of the homes that this will be directly affecting and I am completely against it. <laughs> um, I have a couple concerns and I just wanted to share them with you. Um, one being uh, the traffic. I'm very, very concerned about all the traffic that this will ensue. Um, there are lots of children that come in and out of the high school, the elementary school, that walk, um, that are just going now to the new gas station. That was a big concern of mine as well. Um, and then you're adding many other homes into that. And um, my understanding that it's supposed to be 64 homes or 64 units. Um, and if we have two cars per household, that's over 120 cars. That's a lot. And I know those rows over there can't withhold that either. We live right in front of the mailboxes on, on Forest Ridge and the road is literally um, eroding from all of the traffic that comes in and out. Um, it is completely falling apart and I can only imagine that will continue to get worse and that will be a major issue. Um, also the park, the pool park, um, it does have two gates that close at night, but you can walk right around that. And we have issues with people going in and out of the park. Today, my son called me and said that there was somebody that walked from the park into our yard that tried to cut across the um, field to get to the gas station. This is a common occurrence that happens, and this will be more and more of an issue with people going into the park after hours. The police close it up, but you can easily get into that park at all times. And that's gonna cause trash, it's gonna cause um, homeless people, it could cause drug issues. I just, I have a major concern about that. Um, I also just, honestly, I feel like we have a wonderful opportunity to put some homes there, but to have multifamily units is not a great idea. Um, I also, my understanding is that Warrior Ridge is almost at capacity. Um, my daughter had to have one of her special classes moved to another school because there wasn't enough room. They needed to use that room for something else. So where are, we, where are these children going to go if they're not able to go to Warrior Ridge. My understanding is that there's an elementary the other way. So um, I just have many concerns about the, the overall picture of this and what this will do to our community and especially right there. Um, I love this town. We moved from far away to be here. I love it and I love the thought of it growing, but I just don't think that this particular um, space is a great idea to have multifamily unit homes. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, sir. Anyone else would like to speak? Hi, my name is Gina Fang, and I also live in Forest Ridge. Um, I have some of the similar concerns, uh, some a little bit different. I hate speaking in front of people, so please just bear right. with me here. You're good. 
Um, some of the issues that I have thought of is the lighting and the echo concerns. Um, to have a residential complex like that, it it has to be a very well lit place for it to be safe for the residents, but that contradicts um, the privacy and the environment that we currently live in, especially those houses that back up to there. I don't I know how a tree line or really anything would be a barrier enough to satisfy either. Um, speeding, traffic, cut through. At the last meeting, um, I can't remember who exactly it was, but the person from ELS was talking about how um, it was hard to believe that excessive speeds and cut throughs were an issue. Maybe not cut throughs, but excessive speed. Um, as a mom of two small kids that spends more time outside than we do inside, I'm here to tell you that it definitely is an issue. Um, the amount of times I've almost seen kids get hit, the amount of times that I've jumped between cars and kids, not my own, but other kids, um, the amount of times that I've heard cars, engines roaring before I can see them, the amount of times, uh, let's see, what else do we have? I could go on for days about this issue. Um, the amount of times that myself and my son have almost got hit riding e-bikes in a 30 mile an hour and if I wouldn't have heard f uh, the engine roaring and getting over to the side, we probably would have been in intensive care if not worse than that. Um, so dogs driving cars from the dog park, you don't see really people weaving in and out. Um, I just enjoying life, I think, but at the expense of the safety of our residents, I could go on and on. I think that you guys get the idea. I think that um, law enforcement, they can't control that. Um, there would be marginal deterrence if we set up like, um, you know, not a speed trap, but you get what I'm saying, um, to do, you know, uh, supervision there. It just happens so quickly that it can't happen and I think it would be marginal to make a difference there. I think that we need physical barriers. Uh, ideally, I would like speed bumps. I don't think it's gonna happen. We definitely need the, um, the gates closed on both sides just to kind of eliminate that. But for us to be able to get out on 47, then we need a traffic light um, because it would make it hard that way too. Um, so just to keep that in mind, um, uh, it's my understanding that I think that the idea of putting that many people in would boast like the city amenities using the pool, the park, and all of those kinds of things. But at the price point of $1,100 to $1,200 a month, I think it would be hard for families to have the extra money to spend at the city amenities. Um, and I don't think it's gonna make that much of a difference. In saying that, having families um, that do have to work um, to be able to pay those types of rent, I think that there's gonna be a lot of kids that are unsupervised and I hope that it doesn't become a situation in, we call it the forest park, but the pool park um, of a lot of unsupervised, um, unaccompanied kids like there are in um, neighboring communities where me and my kids can't go to those parks because of uh, delinquents, cursing, uh, radios that are super loud battling between one another. It just, the, the permanent residents that are here already, it, it's an inconvenience too um, and we'll take our activities elsewhere. Um, I'm trying to go quick because I have a lot. Uh, if the price point is 1200 um, I know that the goal is is to get people in and uh, you know, sup not supervise, but uh, for lack of a better term, see what's going on by um, like pest control checks. Um, what else did I have? Maintenance checks and things of that nature. I think that um, working in a community in the community for the last ten years, not here but other places, um, it doing random welfare checks on people. What I see versus what. A, a uh, scheduled visit would be is much different. I would be afraid of uh, multifamilies going into one and then getting ready for their maintenance checks. I just think it would be hard. And then you have a price point of 1200 go down to 500 because there's two families there. I think that we need to focus on uh, the people that are already living here and the permanent residents uh, instead of the temporary um, residents. Uh, as far as schools go, um, I think that overcrowding is an issue everywhere you talk to people uh, that's a concern of theirs. Um, as far as my son, he has an IEP. I don't want the overcrowding um, to make him basically become a number on a list for speech. Um, you know, then you are getting 
basically kids that are going and they're getting their 15 minutes, you know, an hour or whatever it is, and they're just a number. It's quality. It, it, the quality will decline for the quantity of kids that are going to be in there. Um, in saying that, concrete example, that makes me pay $5,000 of speech therapy outside of this community where I could be using on the city amenities um, that we have in place. But if I have to spend it outside of school, then I don't have it to spend within our community. And I, I think that that could be a concern of other families that are in our situation. Um, and then just to kind of wrap it up, because I don't know where I'm on my uh, five minutes, uh, the trash issue that it's going to bring, uh, parking, I don't see how um, you could get that many cars in that lot. I mean, we have an issue with parking in our single family homes. I can't imagine how that would be in such a small place. Um, da -da -da -da. And then just the police department being able to handle the um, uprising residents if delinquency in the parks and just having nowhere else to go and nothing else to do becomes an issue, then their hands are tied. There's just a lot of different things that need to be looked in before uh, we go and build it. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak? Yes. Hello, uh, Ed Schmeltz with ELS Properties. I would just like to take a, a few minutes to answer some of the questions. Uh, I'm the the applicant here for the project in, in question uh, behind the fueler. So j just to answer a few questions um, from the concerns from the citizens here tonight. So we are south of the Forest Ridge subdivision, right? So there will be a there will be zero impact traffic wise. And I, I get the complaints. I've driven through Forge, uh, Forest Ridge, and it, it is tough. You know. Cars park on both sides of the road. I get it, it's tough to get through there, but zero of our residents will go through that subdivision. All of our, all of our residents will access from Warrior Ridge. So I, I don't anticipate that being a problem at all. I can't imagine anybody would want to go through Forest Ridge, cut through the gravel roads of the city park and come in the back direction. I just, and, unless there was an accident. You know, I, I just can't imagine that would be an issue. Um, as, as far as, um, you know, homeless people. I, I don't. I don't think that whatever we're doing is going to increase the homeless in the in the uh, area. I don't. I don't quite see that. Um, the lighting and echo concerns. We're a. It's a standard residential subdivision, so our lighting will be no different than any other residential subdivision. We'll have lights 250 feet apart and at intersections, just like any other residential subdivision. We, we're not a commercial use. We don't have. You know. We're not well lit up. It'll be just like a residential subdivision. Um, ex excessive speeds on Forest Ridge. Once again, I don't foresee any of our residents using that those roads. So, people, our, our people will be confined within our subdivision. I I don't foresee that being a problem as far as speed. Um, pest control was brought up. We we do spray for for bugs once a year and as needed. So if there's a problem we spray, we do it once a year anyway. We do welfare checks. Um, so we, we change everybody's furnace filters for them, right? So we go into every house, every unit, no matter what, every three months. And we do this at every unit we own. This is not just something that's new up here, okay? So every three months we go into a unit, we change your furnace filter, we clean your egg coil, we clean off the outside units, and we use that as an opportunity to inspect the inside of the unit, okay? So we see if there's, you know, dogs and cats that aren't registered, that don't have their shots, if there's extra people living in there, we, we take that as an opportunity to note those items. So we, we are very well on top of those type of issues. So th those will not be a problem. Um, as far as rents being 1200 and not being able to afford the city amenities, so we, we try to keep very similar standards with a lot of mortgage companies. So our income standards is three times the rent, okay? So we have the, we have the exact same income standards that most mortgage companies do. So if somebody can buy a house and they can use your facilities, people that are renting our facilities can also use your facilities. Which is one thing, one thing we loved about this location is the proximity to your guys' facilities. You know, there's lakes there, there's the dog park, the golf disc park, there's the aquatic center. It it's, couldn't be more perfect. It's just a great location. 
So we don't anticipate being a problem of not being able to afford that. Um, as far as parking goes, we do already have two spots per unit, and that does not include garages also. So if, if you look at the plan, all of the units along the outside, the perimeter, the duplexes, either have one car or two car garages, and this two per unit does not include those. So that, that's in addition to what's already in there. So, all right, thank you. Thanks, thank you. Thanks. Uh, one, one quick question. Are, do you limit, you, you're definitely a single family residence, correct? You, you, two families can't move into one apartment? Absolutely, yeah, correct. Okay, and you police that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Hello. Hey, how are you doing? Hey. My name is James Ortiz. I'm with On the Rocks Bar and Hookah Lounge. Um, I just want to take a few minutes to specifically say some things about what we're trying to do. Um, we are delighted to present a comprehensive proposal to the establishment of the Bar and Grill with the Hookah Lounge in Warrenton, Missouri. Our proposal encompasses a range of benefits that the establishment would bring to the community, community and local economy. Warrington, Missouri has experienced remar remarkable economic growth over the past decade, attracting a diverse population with the medium age of 36 years old. This demographic presents a significant opportunity for our proposed establishment, catering to the social and recreational preferences of a dynamic and active community. The benefits of the bar and grill with the hookah lounge are the safety environment, <coughs> Sorry, I have terrible stutter, I apologize. I tried my best. Safety and vi variety of hookah options. Our establishment prioritizes safety by offering a range of nicotine-free hookah options, ensuring a pleasant experience for our patrons while mitigating health risks associated with traditional hookah smoking. We will also provide trained staff to educate patrons on responsible hookah usage and monitor consumptions to ensure safety. Um, the security measures we are committed to implementing stringent security measures, including trained personnel, surveillance systems, and strict age verification protocols to maintain a safe and welcoming environment for all patrons. Our security team will undergo regular training to handle any potential issues effectively and swiftly. Um, I know last time at the other meeting, I think we had an issue between nightclub and lounge, um, so I want to speak on that. Um, the lounge setting versus nightclub atmosphere. It is crucial to highlight that our concept leans towards a lounge setting rather than a nightclub atmosphere. This, this, this distinction emph emphasizes our focus on providing a, sorry, a sophisticated and relaxed ambience conducive to socializing and enjoyment. Our interior design will reflect the ambience with comfortable seating, ambient lighting, and stylish decor. Um, the economic landscape of Warrington, characterized by a growing population with the medium age of 36, pre presents a favorable environment for our establishment. With increasing disposable incomes and a preference for recreational venues, our bar and grill with a hookah lounge is poised to drive and contribute significantly to the city's economic prosperity. We have conducted thorough market research and financial projections to ensure the viability and success of our venture. Community engagement and social cohesion. Our venue will serve as a hub for community engagement, hosting various events, live music performances, and cultural, and cultural gatherings that foster, foster social cohesion. We will actively collaborate with local community groups, schools, and organizations to promote community involvement and support charitable uh, initiatives. Uh, exclusive spot in the area. With the addition of a new business, such as the hotel coming, Warrington is becoming an exclusive spot not found anywhere else in the area. Our establishment will further enhance Warrington's appeal as a destination for residents and visitors alike, contributing to its status as a vibrant and desirable community. We will actively promote Warrington as a unique and appealing destination through targeted marketing campaigns and partnerships with local tourism boards. Um, Recognizing the importance of collaboration and compromise, we are open to dialogue and cooperation with the city officials, um, residents, and stakeholders to address any concerns and ensure a harmonious integration of our establishment into community. We are committed to being good neighbors and contributing positively to the overall well-being of Warrington. Um, in conclusion, the establishment of the Bar and Grill with the Hookah Lounge in Warrington, Missouri represents a strategic opportunity to leverage the city's economic growth, a vibrant demographic profile, and unique position as an exclusive destination. We are confident that our proposal aligns with the city's vision for a progressive development and look forward to your favorable consideration. Thank you for considering the 
proposal. If there's anything else, I'll be happy to ask or answer any questions. Thank you, guys. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? For the record, Bart Corman, private citizen, 19355 Durango Drive, Warrington, Missouri. Um, I work right across the alley from the old sportsman's bar. I used to frequent that quite often when I was younger. I don't have a problem with another bar there at all. So, and if they are too loud, I probably need to go home. So <laughs> anyway, so, uh, you know, from a neighboring standpoint, I, you know, from me as an individual employee there, I have no problem with it, so. Thank you, Bart. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is John Cornell, 452 Chantilly Court in the Lake Chateau subdivision. As you all are aware, I'm also a member of the Planning and Zoning Commission, but I want to make clear that I'm here speaking as a city resident and a resident of Lake Chateau, not in my capacity as a Planning and Zoning Commissioner. Um, as the ELS Properties uh, multifamily was uh, proposed, uh, I am also the uh, president of the Lake Chateau subdivision association. Um, I proactively contacted uh, some of my neighbors to get their feedback on it. Um, there were some concerns, namely um, concerns about trespassing on our lake. Any of you that are familiar with our subdivision, we have a lake that backs up to uh, Warrior Avenue, basically right across from the pool uh, parking lot. Um, we already experienced trespassing as kids from who knows where show up and cross in um, just to the west of Mr. Crump's house um, where the fence ends. Um, and I certainly think that some of that could be mitigated by extending that fence. Um, I've had an opportunity to talk to Mr. Schmelz. One of the things that um, I would love to see is on the northwest corner of his uh, of his uh, proposed development, a pathway, a walkway uh, that would lead over to the park. It would then be on the north side of the pool and in the area of the lake within the city park, um, which is a great amenity. Hopefully, uh, a measure like that, which I don't think would be um, an expensive proposition uh, to put in would not only allow them access to our, our very nice parks, but it also divert them, making it the easiest access if they wanted to go fishing, wanted to go to a lake, it's easier to get there than to our private subdivision lake. Um, the other thing that I would like to address, although I am not a resident of Forest Ridge, um, I've got friends over there. Um, they are our neighbors as well. Uh, so this development would be sandwiched uh, between the two. I do understand Mr. Schmelz's um, belief that there would not be an addition, um, any additional traffic going through there. That being said, there is a considerable amount of traffic uh, that goes through the park <clears throat> and comes out through um, Forest Ridge subdivision. Uh, I was concerned about that when the fueler went in, and I don't know if that increased any of the traffic, but the one thing, if you all have been through Forest Ridge subdivision and you know how that was platted and developed, there are minimal setbacks on the front, uh, parking is at a minimum, lots of, of on-street parking out there, and it's an obstacle course to get through there. Um, any added traffic uh, to that, it would be a nightmare. Uh, I can't imagine what that does to property values, marketability, and the safety. Um, so I do think that um, I would like the city to consider closing the gate from Forest Ridge subdivision into the park um, just on that side to vehicle traffic. Allow bike traffic, allow foot traffic for those residents to get through. And quite honestly, I use it to cut through the pool park, through their subdivision, to the city access into Binkley Park. Um, it's, a, it's a great way to uh, walk our, our city. Uh, that being said, if you cut that off within amount of time, 
uh, citizens will realize, wait a second, if I need to get to the pool, to the uh, disc golf, to the park, I need to go down Warrior Avenue, which is designed for that kind of traffic. It is the best. I don't know of any other park that requires multiple entrances. I know Dyer doesn't have multiple entrances. I know Binkley uh, Park doesn't have multiple entrances. Um, so I think that that would be um, something that could uh, be done to mitigate uh, the current uh, traffic patterns through their subdivision uh, and also alleviate any concerns of any future. So thank you all for your consideration. Thanks, John. Thank you, John. Is there a reason why that gate is opened? I mean, why do we, I mean, there's, I know on some uh, instances and in, uh, subdivisions, we need two accesses for the fire department, uh, but is there's not a reason, why do we, why is it, I, I guess even, why is it, it even just, there? It was just built that way to have two accesses, and I think it was probably built. Anyone else? <coughs> yes, uh, my name is Chris Wolf with Wonder Lake Survey and Engineering. Um, I do have a short PowerPoint presentation about uh, Parkview Estates. I don't know if now's the time to go through that or later in the meeting. Yeah, I think it's it's an item on the agenda, so that's when we'll actually go through okay. that. All right, sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> so to answer some of that that was not answered by everybody who came up. Um, one issue that came up that I, I highlighted was a, a park or a stoplight at the intersection. Um, that is a MoDOT issue that yeah we're, we we can't touch. <laughs> I, I laugh at that because I wish we could and I wish we had the power to push that. Um, sometimes we're at their mercy. Um, the only recommend, recommendation I can make is flood them with emails. That it, you know, you feel like there is a danger at that intersection due to population growth, and that it's needed. Um, that gives us extra push when we go up there. So that's that's my biggest recommendation I can make for you. Um, just put it on an agenda to keep being annoying to them. <laughs> that's what we do, and uh, eventually it opens up a dialogue um, as to why, or they send an engineer down to do uh, a quick analysis on the on the area. Um, the gate. Give us a little bit to look at it. I mean, you know, obviously you just heard um, may not be any issue with closing it, but we need to check all avenues to make sure we can. Um, but I do agree with Mr. Cornell that we can probably open it up for gate or for walking and bike access, and that way it's not fully closed. Closed, and any time that we may need to have it open for fire, we can try and work something with the fire district as a city, to where we can give them accommodation for a lock or what be it, and it may slow them down a little bit, but. At least it's, uh, you know, those those uh, calls are hopefully at a minimal compared to what it would be for safety. So um, I think that would be prominent for our decision and, and where we would move with it. Um, but if you would like to leave your information, I'm sure we can keep in contact with you and let you know where we're going with it and where it's at. So I think I answered most of those. I think Schmelzel answered most of them. Uh, did I, am I missing anything we didn't answer on just the Force Ridge part? Um, as far as the UGA, we're it's an item on the agenda, so we'll be discussing it a little bit more. I'm sure we'll ask you guys back up for questions then. <laughs> but uh, we'll, we have that on the agenda. So um, anything else? Anyone else? All right, we'll move on. Next will be Board of Alderman comments. Good to be here. All right, mayor's comments. I'll keep this short and sweet. Thank you for Alderman Crump for standing in for me while I was sick last week. Um, I appreciate it. Um, other than that, um, I really have much more than that, but uh, I love the participation that we have going on tonight. Um, I Personally, we don't get this. <laughs> it's kind of nice to have the interaction. 
Um, we usually have to go out and meet people or talk to people. And I've said this time and time again, sometimes our circles are small, so we don't get everybody's opinion. It's nice to hear people's opinions and coming to the meetings and interjecting it. Whether it goes the way you want it to or not, it's still good to hear which side. So maybe we can come to a compromise on a lot of different um, decisions we have to make. Um, they're not always great, sometimes they are. Um, but hearing both, we always try and at least take, if you give us five, we're gonna take three into consideration, two into consideration, and try and move with it. If we can take all five, we will, but if we can't, because we're bound by certain things, but I do wanna let people know, we have a PNZ for a reason. A lot of people look at it and, uh, and say, well, what's the big deal with PNZ? Well, they're kind of the backbone for a lot of our decisions. We listen to them, we ask them to be very um, well-versed in our ordinances and our zoning. Um, therefore, they make proper decisions and guide us. Um, that being said, it's not that we don't listen to the public. It's that sometimes we have to be set by those that we are set, setting forth on the zoning ordinances and we have to stick to those. Um, that doesn't mean we can't voice the opinion. It doesn't mean we can't step in and say things, but understand there's a reasonable between all of them, reasonable answer between all of them. Some of them we have to answer on a side that you don't like, and some of them we will take into consideration and try and ask uh, people that are willing to work, and most are, to concede to those, um, such as greenery or what be it, and a lot of the builders do. So um, I'll say on both ends, I appreciate everyone that lives here, but I also appreciate the builders that will come to the board and talk to us and, and try and meet that middle ground to try and fit some of the needs that people are asking for. So with that, I'll, I'll quit. I said I'm short up, and I one went One quick long. second. I did have a comment. Sure. Um, I was at the Tribute to Veterans Memorial out on the uh, service road today, and uh, it, it just happens to be, it's either today or upcoming, the Veterans Mo uh, Vietnam Veterans Memorial Day. And they collected out at the uh, tribute today and, and took a very nice photo. There were 25 Vietnam veterans from Warrington at the memorial today. Really? So, yeah. It'll be in the paper, I assume, next week. But I hate to say it, but I didn't know anything was, about it. It was super. It was a nice, nice thing. I'd like to have been there. Anything else? All right, next will be the logo selection. So um, we had 12 logos. As you know, we're going out for looking for a new logo to update our current one. We had 12 submitted. Um, those were all presented to the board. And tonight I have the top three of okay. your choices for you guys to make a decision on which one. Keep in mind, we did not put a big amount in the budget for a logo change, for a big logo change, so we're kind of doing this in phases slowly. Um, our first step will be once you decide, we'll start changing out like our advertisements and our shirts or whatever, those kind of things that we do every day, any signs that come up that need to be replaced. And then in our next budget, we'll start replacing more and more. So I think it's, it's um, I think one thing we do need to, to add to that is education on why this came about. Um, I, I would like the participation of the other aldermen, but I believe I'll speak in this sense that there are a lot of people that, in the community that have voiced not liking the current logo and wanted to go back to the old one. Um, so we left it open to submissions again from the public that live here or lives in the surrounding area as to what they would have for ideas. And this is the top three. screens so it would be either a choice of the black and white or the color I mean that was she just kind of give, gave us okay. that little black and white just version. want to make sure Do you need a vote on which one Please. <laughs> well, this one's a little more difficult to go ahead and make a motion for. So, so uh, I, I'm, I'm going to say I did I did vote for B, but with the request that the blue would be red to match the school colors.
That was one of my votes. Can we go back to A again? Mm -hmm. Can I add that <clears throat> there are going to be times when this is going to be black and white? Yeah. So keep that no, in mind. You're requesting red. There's still going to be times where that's all black. <laughs> yeah. 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 But like on signs of what be it that we can have. Color. It, yes, if it can be color, it will be color. But there's times where we cannot use color that we have to use black. And like shirts would be one of them, especially in a in a lot of detail. You're not going to get color in those. It's no. going to be all black. And that's what I'm thinking of with the the number one. I mean, I I like it <clears throat> on paper, but to put that on a shirt and embroidery and it's, yeah, I worry it's, how it's, that would shrink down with all the windows and the in the houses. It's kind of loud. It's just got a lot a lot going on. But, I mean, I do like it. <laughs> so, why don't we go alderman by alderman on which one they'd like, and then I'll make a motion on yeah. the majority. I, uh, <clears throat> I like uh, A or B. I prefer A. Okay. I prefer opinion. Schultz, you're next. Alderman Schultz. I like B. I like B with with the uh, with red and where the blue is. Okay. Um, Colin. I like C. It's already a three, <laughs> already a three-way tie. Yeah. Um, I like A. On um, Crump. Madison, can I see C, please? Yes. Gordon Alderman Schultz. I'm going to go with B. Okay. Hey. Okay. I like the uh, I like the fact that it has the downtown uh, uh, different buildings in the downtown area. And, I, and you're right; it may be an issue, for, but I think that that can work out as far as putting on shirts. Or so the, it's a three to two to one. So A is what we're going with. And I will entertain a motion to accept logo A as the new logo for the city of Warrington. No move. Second. Motion made by uh, Alderman Miller, second by Alderman Rowmaker. Correct? Yeah. Roll call vote. Alderman Schultz. Yes. <laughs> Alderman Crump. Yes. Alderman Quarter. Yes. Alderman Cullum. Yes. Alderman Rowmaker. Yes. Alderman Miller. Yes. <coughs> Motion passes six to zero. I hope you and the public that are happy with this one. Hold on. Are we changing this blue to red too? Or? <laughs> I just think needs more votes on it. <laughs> Changing it this blue to red I think too. It'll look okay in black and white. <laughs> well, I, so now we've I think we've already little, passed the motion. We, we want to see different color options and <laughs> finalize it. Yeah, there well, you go. Okay. <laughs> but not this you, meeting. No. <laughs> Thank you. I will tell you that was submitted by Diane Griesinger. Sure. Just so you know. Well, please send her a note back saying that was the All of well, majority of the board. Yeah, thanks everybody who submitted that. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. That's, that's actually, that's actually honestly, work. If you want to take a step further, and I'd ask that you do it, have come in. I mean, uh, we'd Absolutely. all like to meet all three that made the top. I mean, sure. say thank you to them for their submissions and let them know each all, each alderman can actually tell them, you know, hey, I, I did really like yours. I voted for it, but unfortunately, we went with A. <laughs> no, it's a bad way to say it, but. <laughs> oh. All right. Moving on. Next word from City Administrator Brandy Walters. Good evening. The first thing that I have for you tonight is approval for out-of-state training for our finance officer, Megan Welder, in April. Um, this is a three-day training in Chicago for Government Finance Officers Association. It is a great accounting academy that she would go to and attend. Um, also helps her 
create that group of peers that she can um, bounce ideas off of and that kind of thing. Any questions on that? I'll entertain a motion to approve the out-of-state training for Finance Officer Megan Welder in April of 2024. So moved. Second. Motion made by Quarter. Second by McCollum. Roll call vote. Alderman Crump? Yes. Alderman Quarter? Yes. Alderman Cullum? Yes. Alderman Romaker? Yes. Alderman Miller? Yes. <clears throat> Alderman Schultz? Yes. Motion passes 6-0. The next thing I have for you tonight is a change to Chapter 520 regarding street, street excavation. Um, this is a code change when we started having a lot of the new um, internet services going in our right-of-ways and that kind of thing. So I had the legal counsel to look at that. Um, for our most recent was Brightspeed. And when they started looking at it, they realized that there was two code provisions in there in our code. And so therefore they combined the two and corrected any discrepancies. In this bill, we changed it from street excavation to right of way management as the name. And it, they also made it consistent with all the current state statutes. Are there any questions on that? No. Oh, okay, this will be a bill. So I will entertain a motion for the first reading of bill number 17-24. Someone. Second. Motion made by McCullum. Second by Melmaker. Bill number 17-24, an ordinance of the City of Warrenton, Missouri, amending Chapter 520 of the Municipal Code of the City of Warrenton by deleting in its entirety, enacting in lieu thereof a new Chapter 520, and enacting right-of-way management regulations. I'll entertain a motion for the second reading of Bill number 17-24. So moved. Second. Motion made by Miller, second by McCorder. Bill number 17-24, an ordinance of the City of Warrenton, Missouri, amending Chapter 520 of the Municipal Code of the City of Warrenton by deleting in its entirety, enacting in lieu thereof a new Chapter 520, and enacting right-of-way management regulations. We'll call vote. Alderman Quarter? Yes. Alderman Cullum? Yes. Alderman Romaker? Yes. Alderman Miller? Yes. Alderman Scholes? Yes. Alderman Crump? Yes. Motion, our bill passes six to zero. Just a couple operational things. We currently still have an open um, vacancy on PNZ. So if you have anybody, please send them our way. March 23rd is the ribbon cutting at the complex, which John's going to talk about a little bit tonight. March 25th is a Boone Slick Regional Planning Meeting, and that is at noon. March 26th is Cocktails and Conversations with the Greater Warren County Economic Development Council. That is at from 5 to 6 on the patio at 227 Social House. So if you're interested in going to that, please let me know because we have to RSVP. Um, May 14th is a work session regarding the public hearing process. And that's all I have for you. What about May 11th, May 18th? Is that covered by John? Yeah. All right, we'll give him the we'll give him the time to speak. Okay. <laughs> Any questions? Nope. No. All right. Thanks, Brandy. Next, we'll hear from Director of Operations John Struckoff. Good evening. First item I have for you tonight is the annual or the monthly admin, admin report. Uh, nothing too large to report on there. We did quite a few interviews, uh, mainly in the police department last month. I believe we got a couple of those hired and we're still looking up there so uh, have no other questions on the admin report move on to my my monthly important dates um, <clears throat> as Brandy said this weekend Saturday March 23rd at 11 o'clock is the grand open ribby, ribbon cutting at the athletic complex I'll talk a little bit more of that in a minute uh, May 11th is citywide yard sale. May 18th is the citywide cleanup at the fairgrounds. Um, we add a new event July 2nd from 10 to 2 in this building. We're going to host a blood drive. The Red Cross reached out to us and wanted us to host a blood drive. So we're going to do that here in this building on July 2nd. Um, and then Fall Festival September 21st. Which we're having who? We're having Lone Star Okay, is our main stage act. That's great. I just wanted to make sure everybody knew that. Yes. <laughs> so uh, uh, Madison has a couple pictures. I, we took some drone shots of the completed fields. They are complete. We did our final walkthrough on Friday. 
Um, that, they, so that is a drone shot. This is a drone shot. So, correct. John, I'm going to be honest. It looks like it's probably cut and pasted and photoshopped. <laughs> <laughs> no, that is about For anybody else comments fields. on Facebook, I'm just going to say it. <laughs> no, that is 400 feet above our fields of what they look like on Friday. So um, it, they are complete. They were they did a little bit of touch up on a few things that we had we noticed on the walkthrough. Uh, yesterday, I believe we're doing city crews are doing some uh, concrete repairs on a couple of the sidewalks. Um, we're all excited, ready to go on for Saturday. Um, it's going to be a, a smaller tournament, but it, we're hoping to get that out of our out of the way to make sure that everything is going to work as we're, we're hoping. So, it looks great. It really it, does. It, it, it really great. turned out yeah. awesome. So, I, I I actually went out before they were totally finished. And did you walk on it? Yes, I did. That's an ordinance violation. Do you, <laughs> <laughs> do you have a lot of uh, bookings, John? <laughs> did you? Did you? Uh, was it Field of Dreams for you? Was it? <laughs> Absolutely. It was a dream. Uh, Are there a lot of concessions it, down here? We so right now we're still going to operate out of the concessions trailer, which is not in any of these pictures because we moved everything out to get everything cleaned up. Um, uh, uh, in the quad, down in the quad, there, that's, that's thinking, the concession yeah. trailer is going to be there. Um, the main concession stand is still going to be open. That's going to be where you're going to get more in-depth stuff. And that concession trailer, you're really limited on space. So you're going to be able to get chips, drinks, candy. They're going to get as much as you can. Yeah. Of, yeah. If you're going to want a full meal, you're probably going to want to just walk up to the big big stand. So. Or go to one of our local restaurants. <laughs> well. Either way, we, we'd we like them to stay there, but... <laughs> All them will make a at some time. Um, and if you remember right, they, they did get their liquor license last year at the end of the season, so they will be selling um, beer this year at, at the complex yeah. for the duration of the season, so... Uh, how fully uh, booked are they? Are they are the, they being received well? For tournaments? Uh, absolutely. So they, they have the first two tournaments, which not this weekend. This weekend was a tournament that they put together, that Game 7 put together, just for people that are, are loyal customers to them and they wanted to try the field out and, and the, this is a free tournament. So they don't, they're coming here because we're trying to break the ice. You know, we're saying, hey, come on out, check out our fields. We got a great complex. Um, if something is wrong and they didn't pay for it, it's easier to say, hey, we're gonna get that fixed. But when they paid for that tournament and something's wrong, they're gonna want something right away. So um, that's what this weekend's all about. But the, the next two weekends are completely sold out. Awesome. So I know that for sure. As far as farther into the future, I'm not sure, but I'm I'm sure that they have plenty of games scheduled at, at these fields. So I know I I kind of brought this up, to Brandy, uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, are we letting the local <laughs> restaurants or and and community realize what's going on uh, in the community with as far as hey, there's going to be 300 kids out here with parents so yeah so in the past we uh before we had big tournaments we sent out a postcard to the to the local businesses and let them hey there's going to be a tournament this weekend there's going to be 30 teams expected a bigger busier crowd you know um we're going to send out a postcard probably next week i didn't want to send it out too early because they're probably going to forget about it but if you get it the week before the tournament they're going to see this first tournament it's going to be I, I don't know what the number of teams is but i'm sure it's going to be 30 teams if not more that first weekend, so that's the weekend of Easter, and they're, they're going to be they're going to be busy. So town town's going to fill up pretty quick. So um, can you give us times on when the ribbon cutting will be? The time is going to be at eleven o'clock. The plan is that we're going to cut the ribbon, uh, hoping to get all the teams on the field, make a big <coughs> ribbon cutting, large picture. Um, I believe the game times are eleven thirty. They're going to uh, line up all the teams on the on the foul lines and sing the national anthem. We have, um, I believe, a few people from the high school coming out to sing the national anthem live on a, on a PA system. So it's going to be a pretty cool day. Ooh. Yeah. No. Feel the dreams, Will. I'm throwing the first pitch. This guy's getting old. I ain't going to harm so there, there's still going to be some places you can see on these pictures that are just uh, seeded and straw. You know, as the grass comes up, we're going to have to keep up with that kind of areas. But you're, you're going to notice that there's some construction areas yet. <laughs> we did a lot of work over the winter. So, um, you know, as the fields progress throughout the season, it's going to it's going to look nice. So there again, it looks nice now. Oh yeah, they did. I get where you're going. Phenomenal job. Yeah. They did a phenomenal job. It is amazing. 
Anything else? Uh, that's all I have. All right, thank you. Thank, thank you, John. Thank you, John. Next, we'll hear from our building commissioner, Mike Cross. Good evening, Mayor and Board. <clears throat> we have my monthly report. Got a few highlights. We're up to 13 new homes being built so far this year on permits. Um, got four brand new homes coming in on Cool Avenue over by Blackhawk. That open lot there, there's four homes going in there. We've actually got two new homes popped in at Walnut Hollow in that new phase out there already. Several more lots in there already sold. So that's moving along quite well. As we all know that there's, we've already approved 64 units under construction up there at Creekside. And they're moving and on he those. continues to grow. Yeah. All the highlights I got for you. Excellent. Any questions? <clears throat> Thanks, Thanks Mike. I Thank appreciate you, Mike. it, Mike. Welcome. Next we'll hear from Chief of Police, Larry Ellard. Good evening. The only item I have for you tonight on the agenda is my monthly report. If you don't have any questions on that, I would like to take the rest of my time to shamelessly plug the torch run that will be coming up on May 24th. The route hasn't been set yet, starting point hasn't been set yet, but as usual it's going to end here with refreshments and a ceremony. Um, T-shirts will be on sale shortly at the PD. Long sleeve and short sleeve. I don't know the color this year yet, so. What's the date on that? Uh, the 24th of May. 24th of May. The Friday. So, obviously, the whole town watches this on YouTube. You know that, right? <laughs> yeah. If addressed and word of mouth spreads, can they just ask the, any of your law enforcement people where they can get the shirts and they'll guide them? Absolutely. Excellent. And uh, when did you say the date was again, sir? May 24th. Time to start will be announced. Okay. Um, as always, I think the city, I know the city sponsors anything with the Special Olympics torch run, and uh, I, I, we get back behind it and push it pretty heavy. Um, but please, word of mouth to everyone who either watches it or is here tonight, um, push it out there. It, it, the shirt sales go to helping with the Special Olympics, and, and, and if you have not seen it, come down and see it. It's It's very, very much a... It'll bring joy to your heart to watch how they address things and how the participants enjoy being able to do this. And as usual, we'll be coming around to the departments to recruit runners. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how far? <laughs> you need drivers for the van? seven miles last oh. year. Do you need drivers for the van? I, think we got the ball. I got about 50 feet If you, you want to drive a van, sir, come on down. <laughs> <coughs> Anything else? No, sir. Any questions? No. No. Thank you very much. Thanks, Thanks Chief. Next, uh, we'll speak to the Director of Planning and Development, Tim Burks. Good evening, everyone. You have a copy of my monthly report for February. Uh, a few of the highlights. Uh, ELS property had their grand opening at their <coughs> new building on uh, South Highway 47. Uh, SSM Healthcare had their grand opening uh, last month. And Aurora Beauty Company opened at 1,000 Warrington Shops um, last month. And that's all I have. Do you have any questions? I don't believe so. <clears throat> Unfortunately, I was in the SSM building the other day, and it looks amazing. <coughs> it's great. That it after really you nice. went to the fields? I'm sorry? Was that after you went to the fields? Yeah. A little pulled muscle? After the fields. I was just kind of... <laughs> Right, right. When you're retired, you can do that. <laughs> Go ahead. No, I was just saying that they, it looked, it's very nice. It it's nice great. building. It's a very nice facility. Hope they can add more uh, physicians to it. So it's great. Thank you, Tim. You're welcome. Go ahead, Tim. All right. <coughs> First item on the agenda is amendment to section 405.255 accessory buildings and structures. Uh, ADM 134, uh, this is the uh, amendment we did uh, a couple months ago. We refined the shipping container, the language for the shipping containers. Uh, the term shipping container includes, but not limited to, cargo containers, railroad cars, semi-truck trailers, uh, truck vans, converted <coughs> motor, mobile homes, and other enclosed type trailers, recreational vehicles, 
uh, bus bodies and semi uh, prefabricated items and structure. Also takes care of the um, accessory structure height compared to the, the main building and it also has a provision for in residential areas where people can still use containers to move in and move out uh, with a 10 day. They can use the containers for 10 days to, to move in and out of the residence. Um, this was presented at PNZ. The motion passed six to zero with three absent and one vacancy. Do you have any questions? Any questions before we move to a first reading? No. All right, I'll entertain a motion for the first reading of bill number 18-24. <coughs> So moved. Second. We'll take the first one by Alderman Cullum. We'll take the second one by Alderman Romaker. Bill number 18-24, an ordinance of the City of Warrington, Missouri, amending regulations related to accessory structures and buildings. Before we move on, I just want to know, how do you get that so clear? <laughs> like, I don't know. I feel like I'm stressing amazing. out over here trying to get all the no, words it right. it sounds amazingly <laughs> clear when you read it. <laughs> Uh, I'll entertain a motion for the second reading of bill number 18-24. So moved. Second. second. Motion made by Alderman Quarter, seconded by Alderman Crump. Bill number 18-24, an ordinance of the City of Warrington, Missouri, amending regulations related to accessory structures and buildings. Roll call vote. Alderman Cullum. Yes. Alderman Romaker. Yes. Alderman Miller. Yes. Alderman Scholes. Yes. Alderman Crump. Yes. Alderman Quarter. Yes. Bill passes six to zero. Okay. Next item on the agenda is the Park View Estates Apartments PUD 002. <coughs> Ed Schmelz has applied for a plan unit development for a 6.68 acre parcel of land on the west side of Highway 47 north of Warrior Avenue. The proposed PUD would include 19 buildings containing 64 units across 6.68 acres. Proposed density is well below the maximum residential density allowed, and the PUD is request to allow for various size townhomes within the one development. Uh, a future land use plan designate the subject site as a mixed use. The mixed use designation promotes a traditional design with commercial and residential use. As proposed, the applicant would utilize the proposed PUD for townhomes, apartments, which would further uh, the goals and of the comprehensive plan. <coughs> Staff has reviewed the proposed PUD plan unit development and found the proposal consistent with Chapter 405 zoning regulations of the Warrington Municipal Code. Further, the proposed design furthers the goal of the comprehensive plan. A few notes, all streets and parking areas internal to the site shall be private. Uh, before construction, submit a stormwater management plan and before construction, submit required park and open space uh, fees. Um, the Project was presented at PNZ. The motion passed six to zero with three absence and one vacancy. Ed, the applicant, Ed, is Smeltz is here tonight, along with Chris, the engineer, which has a presentation. Uh, do you have any questions for me? I don't believe we have any questions for you. You want to do the presentation now, please? Yes, thank you. Uh, my name is Chris Wolf with Wonderlick Survey and Engineering. I'm um, here with uh, developer Ed Schmelz, and I have a short PowerPoint and hope to answer any questions that you may have. Um, you know, the city of Warrenton is different than some as far as trying to do multifamily. Uh, in the past, you just had to get the correct zoning and you could do a multifamily based on the zoning. And now everything's a planning unit development. So that means every all the multifamily gets to come before the board uh, and you guys get a chance to review it. And that is different from some other communities uh, where it basically just passes if you have the correct zoning district. So that's one thing that is a little bit different. Um, with the Parkview Estates, um, basically what we have is 64 um, single family units uh, within the development. Uh, there's 36 townhomes um, and then 28 duplexes. Uh, the 10 of the duplexes are three bedroom, two and a half bath, one car. Uh, and then we have 18, three bedroom, two and a half bath, two car, uh, as far as the duplex. That is going to be on that 6.68 acres. Right now it's zoned commercial. Uh, that it was part of uh, the Brittany Business Park. Um, that is all zoned C3. Uh, I'm sure you guys are pretty familiar uh, with the site uh, location. 
Uh, this is a copy of the zoning map, and you can see that the single family development to the north, uh, the gas station to the east, and this piece is all zoned commercial, uh, basically because it was part of the Bruny Business Park to start out with. Um, one of our amenities there is the park uh, to the west. Uh, this is just a copy of our site plan that was submitted uh, for the plan new development. You can see that we have the duplexes around the exterior of the development and then the attached single family townhomes um, concentrated in the middle of development. Um, we did talk to some of the planning and zoning members, um, some of the community members, and uh, we didn't really have a, a lot of amenities within this development because the amenities uh, are so close being the city park. Um, one of the things that we did add was a walking trail uh, from our interior sidewalks uh, to the city park uh, to try to encourage the use of the city park. Um, but we also did add a dog park uh, within this development. So we do have a dog park and then we have a sidewalk that's a long warrior right now that takes people into the city park and we put a walking trail um, into uh, to the north there uh, in between uh, buildings four and five there. Uh, this is existing piece of ground out there, uh, aerial view of that. You can kind of see the Warrington Pool Park off to the west, uh, single family development to the north. Um, this is basically the duplexes um, laid in there along with the townhomes. Uh, this is kind of situated in an area in between commercial and uh, uh, the city park. So we think it's a good use to be multifamily to kind of buffer um, the commercial district uh, to the single family homes. Uh, another one of the amenities that we think is uh, good for our development is the new ELS office uh, and maintenance building. So this is really close to this development. So, I mean, it's nice to have um, a new office uh, in the close proximity of this proposed development. There shouldn't be any issues with taking care of complaints or um, basically any kind of maintenance issues with the facility so close to each other. Um, just the other amenity is the pool park. Um, <coughs> You know, we're trying to help the usage to drum up maybe some additional business for the pool facility, um, but there is the existing lake uh, that we, we are trying to uh, put a walking trail directly to, uh, to give our residents uh, access uh, to the park. There is additional uh, dog park there, um, but we did provide one of our own at the same time. Um, this is a picture of the eight unit townhome <coughs> Uh, that uh, ELS has built previously. Uh, this is what one of the townhomes will look like. Um, we have a couple eight units uh, townhomes on the proposed development. Uh, this is a rendering of the two car duplex uh, that we're putting in. And here is a rendering of the uh, single car duplex townhome. Uh, that is the uh, three bedroom, two and a half bath, one car. Uh, previous projects d done by this developer, um, <laughs> ELS has done Orange Blossom Estates, uh, they've done Creekside Apartments, um, uh, the single family development that was just approved was uh, Woodland Heights uh, that is under construction now. Uh, and just kind of a conclusion, uh, 64 units on 6.68 acres, amenities, um, we think the, the office being close is an amenity, the uh, uh, city amenities that are already there. Um, and uh, the uh, walk, walking trail, and we have uh, additional dog park that we're putting in. And you know, as far as the uh, green space on the site, 55% uh, of the site is green space. So if you take out the driveways, uh, the parking spaces, the buildings, um, the grass area that's left, the trees and grass area is 55% of the site. Um, in a normal commercial C3 um, a planning standpoint, um, Detention stormwater runoff is 90% in a commercial area that can be impervious. So basically, instead of 10% of green space on a normal commercial development, we get 55% green space. So that's one thing. Um, this site being multifamily instead of commercial, there will be less stormwater runoff uh, potential. 
And then I'd just like to go back to uh, one of these pictures. Um, you know, as far as the layout goes, you can kind of see what's going on there. There will be a future connector, I'm sure, um, off of uh, Warrior Avenue. But for the time being, with the light on Warrior Avenue and with our only sole connection to Warrior Avenue, you know, all the traffic is going to end up on Warrior Avenue to try to. Um, get to Bruni Parkway and driving through the park. I don't see that being a big problem uh, for our residents to drive on the streets over there. Um, and if the gate goes up, uh, trying to protect those residents, uh, I, I don't think that's gonna be a detriment to this development. Uh, I think because of the traffic on 47, you know, going to the light is gonna be the preference of pretty much everybody in the development. That concludes the presentation. If you guys got any questions, um, I don't know if Ed was wanting to say anything else at this point, but if you guys got any questions, him or I can uh, answer. Just a statement on, on the fronts. They are going to be brick like the rest of the properties. They are brick. Yes. They are brick. Okay, thank you. The walking path that's between <coughs> units four and five, is that going to hook to anything? Or are we going to... So just but right That's a good point because right now if the... Uh, Basically, in the park slide, if I can get back to that, uh, that's one of them right there. Uh, there's supposed to be a future walking trail, it looks like, all the way around the uh, lake, and I don't think that exists right now. Uh, I think that was on the big picture plan of uh, the Warrington Pool Park. So our walking trail would connect to that uh, future walking trail around the lake. Right there by the horseshoe pits. <laughs> <laughs> I, sorry, I just took your little thing for time to voice my concerns. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? No. <clears throat> All right. Thank you. Thank you. I think most of the concerns have been brought up during the public <coughs> hearing, and I don't want to force anybody who really doesn't like speaking to come back up and speak, so. <laughs> um, are there any concerns or questions that any of the aldermen would have? No. This will be a bill. I will entertain a first reading of bill number 19-24. So moved. Second. Motion made well. Quarter. Second by Alderman Cullum. Bill number 19-24, an ordinance of the City of Warrington, Missouri, providing for the rezoning of approximately 6.68 acres on the west side of Highway 47 north of Warrior Road from C3 Highway Commercial District to planned unit development. I'll entertain a motion for the second reading of Bill number 19-24. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Rollmaker, seconded by Alderman Schultz. Bill number 19-24, an ordinance of the City of Warrenton, Missouri, providing for the rezoning of approximately 6.68 acres on the west side of Highway 47 North of Warrior Road from C3 Highway Commercial District to planned unit development. Roll call vote. Alderman Rowmaker? Yes. Alderman Miller? Yes. Alderman Scholes? Yes. Alderman Crump? Yes. Alderman Quarter? Yes. Alderman Cullum? Yes. Bill passes six to zero. That being said, understand we're still taking in consideration what you ladies had presented and Mr. Cornell had presented tonight. And uh, we'll, we'll definitely keep in contact with you guys, let you know of any other plans that maybe we can help out with or change to minimize some of your concerns. I don't want you guys thinking walking away from it without us doing anything. We'll, we'll definitely be in touch and talk to you about some of the concerns. All right. But, uh, okay. Next item on the agenda is the On the Rocks Hookah Bar, CUP 94 and SP 168. Uh, Jesse Dettenwager and James Ortiz have submitted an application for a conditional use permit and a site plan for a building located on the south side of East Boonslick Road and east of South Market Street at 108 East Boonslick. The building is currently zoned C2 General Commercial. The applicants have proposed a bar and grill hookah lounge at the location. Uh, the restaurant would be a permitted use in the C2 general 
commercial district defines bar, tavern, and nightclub as a condition of use in Appendix A. The codes and standards for the condition of use and site plans have been met. Uh, staff has reviewed the conditional use permit and the site plan and found that the proposed is consistent with the Chapter 405 of the Zoning Regulations of Warrington Municipal Code. All items and notices have been provided and completed as required by state and local laws. Um, the On the Rock Bar and Hookah Lounge conditional use uh, CUP 94 was voted on at the Planning and Zoning. The motion failed two to four with three absent and one vacancy. And the On the Rock Bar and Hookah Lounge Site Plan 168 was voted on at the Planning and Zoning. The motion tied three to three with three absence and one vacancy. Um, both the applicants are here if you have any questions. Are there any questions? No. All right. We'll go to a first reading of bill number 20-24. 2024. Oh, sorry, it's the next one. My bad. Reading of bill number 20-24. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Crump, second by Alderman Schultz. Bill number 20-24, an ordinance of the City of Warrenton, Missouri, approving a conditional use permit for certain property located at 108 East Boonslick Road within the C2 General Commercial District to operate a bar. I'll entertain a motion for a second reading of bill number 20-24. So moved. Second. <coughs> Motion made by Alderman Cullum. Who seconded? I'm sorry. Rowmaker. Alderman Rowmaker seconded it. Bill number 20-24, an ordinance of the City of Warrington, Missouri, approving a conditional use permit for certain property located at 108 East Boonslick Road within the C2 General Commercial District to operate a bar. Roll call vote. Alderman Miller. No. Alderman Scholes? Yes. Alderman Crump? Yes. Alderman Quarter? No. Alderman Cullum? Yes. Alderman Rowmaker? No. So it's a 3-3 three, three to 3 yes, 3 no. <coughs> um, tiebreaker will be myself and I'll say a yes due to the fact that the codes and standards have been met for the city of Warrington. So three to three with a tie breaking vote of yes. Go ahead, Tim. Okay, the next item is the Hampton Inn SP 169. Uh, 2124. 2124, the uh, site plan for certain property located. <coughs> no, wait. Yeah, read the ordinance. And say okay. the yeah, it's part of the same report. We can just vote on the ordinance. I'll make a motion for the first reading <laughs> of ordinance 21, or bill number 2124. Second. Motion made by McCollum, second by McCollum Schultz. Bill number 21-24, an ordinance of the City of Warrington, Missouri, approving a site plan for certain property located at 108 East Spoonslick Road in the city. I'll entertain a motion for the second reading of bill number 21-24. So moved. Second. Make it for motion made by Alderman Crump, second by Alderman Rowmaker. Bill number 21-24, an ordinance of the City of Warrington, Missouri, approving a site plan for certain property located at 108 East Boonslick Road in the city. A vote. Alderman Schultz? Yes. Alderman Crump? Yes. Alderman Quarter? No. Alderman Cullum? Yes. Alderman Rowmaker? No. Alderman Miller? No. Based on the same thing before, if it's met all codes, met all codes and standards that we've asked for, I will vote a yes. Therefore, Bill Number 2124 passes three to three with a tie breaking vote of yes.
But uh, this will be the Hampton Inn uh, Hotel, site plan 169. Uh, Bart Corman of Lewis and Beatty Surveying and Engineering on behalf of uh, SAMP Hospitality LLC request a review and approval of the proposed site plan to build a 14,769 square foot Hampton Inn on the two acre parcel of land west of Market Street on the south side of Veterans Memorial Parkway. The site plan shows the construction of a 80 room hotel building and associated improvements to the site. The subject site is Zone C3 Highway Commercial District and is surrounded by properties of the same zoning classification. Uh, staff has reviewed the proposed site plan consistent with the 405 uh, chapter 405 regulations of the Warranted Municipal Code. All items and notices have been provided and completed as required by state and local law. Uh, the Hampton Inn Site Plan 169 was presented at the Planning and Zoning um, meeting. The motion passed 6 to 0 with 3 absent and 1 vacancy. Uh, Bart Corman is here, uh, present tonight, can answer any questions for this project. Do you have any questions for me? I do not. Does anyone else have any questions? No. no. I'll entertain a motion for the first reading of Bill Number 22-24. So moved. Second. I'll go for Crump for the first, quarter for the second. Walk on some money, sorry. <laughs> Bill number 22-24, an ordinance of the City of Warrington approving a site plan for a tract of land located on Veterans Memorial Parkway. I'll entertain a motion for the second reading of Bill number 22-24. A move. Second. Motion made by Alderman Miller, seconded by Alderman Schultz. Bill number 22-24, an ordinance of the City of Warrington approving a site plan for a tract of land located on Veterans Memorial Parkway. Roll call vote. Alderman Crump. Yes. Alderman Quarter? Yes. Alderman Cullum? Yes. Alderman Rowmaker? Yes. Alderman Miller? Yes. Alderman Schultz? Yes. Bill passed 6 to 0. Okay. Uh, the next item is an easement vacate that goes along with the Hampton Inn uh, Hotel. Um, Board Carmen of Lewis and Beatty, Surveying and Engineer, on behalf of SAMP Hospitality LLC, would like to request a vacate of the 5,764 square foot road and utility easement on Lot 3 of Market Street Center. Uh, the road and utility easement is located on the southern part of Lot 3, and the applicant is requesting the removal to make room for the proposed Hampton Inn at the location. Um, the vacate was presented at the planning and zoning. The motion passed six to zero with three absence and one vacancy. Uh, Art Carmen's here. Can answer any questions? Any questions? Um. I'll entertain a motion for the first reading of Bill Number Twenty Three Twenty Four. So moved. Second. Motion made by Colum. <laughs> Second by Alderman Rowmaker. Bill number 23-24, an ordinance of the City of Warrington, Missouri, providing for the release and vacation of a road and utility line easement traversing Lot 3 of Market Street Center. Honor to a motion for the second reading of Bill, 20, bill number 23-24. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Rummaker, second by Alderman Quarter. Bill number 23-24, an ordinance of the City of Warrington, Missouri, providing for the release and vacation of a road and utility line easement traversing Lot 3 of Market Street Center. Roll call vote. Alderman Quarter? Yes. Alderman Cullum? Yes. Alderman Rowmaker? Yes. Alderman Miller? Yes. Alderman Scholes? Yes. Alderman Crump? Yes. Motion passes 6, or bill passes 6-0. My apologies. Go ahead, Tim. Okay, last item on the agenda is the another easement vacate. Uh, Tim Banzi, president and owner of uh, T.S. Banzi Construction Incorporated, is requesting the vacate of the easement um, exhibit lot 110, a Pinckney Manor. Um, the existing 15-foot utility easement is located along the western part of lot 110, and the applicant is requesting to vacate five feet of the 15-foot easement to accommodate a Blake model home built on the other nine lots in the subdivision. Uh, it should be noted that there is no uh, utilities currently in that 15-foot easement. 
So he has a 15 foot easement that runs on the west side and he needs another five feet of that to be able to get the correct setbacks to put another Blake home on. To meet the standards by? Yes. Okay. So uh, this project was presented at PNZ. The motion passed six to zero with three absences and one vacancy. Any questions? Questions for me? Do, I'm sorry, is, go ahead. Is a, is a 15 foot easement a standard and, and why is it there to begin with? That easement was for utilities. Uh, but the re utilities now run, I think, on the southern part of that subdivision. So there currently okay. there's no, there was a no utilities in that. It sat vacant for many, many years. So when that was done, yep. the, the, they were planning on the utilities to run one way, but it, they rerouted and ran it. Down. That's a standard utility easement, yes. 15 feet. Yeah, yeah, and he only needs five feet of it. Okay. So there's still be a 10 foot remaining. Any other questions? No. Bert, you got off real easy tonight. <laughs> I'll entertain a motion for the first reading of bill number 24-24. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alm second by Alm Schultz. Bill number 24-24, an ordinance of the City of Warrington, Missouri, providing for the release and vacation of the eastern five feet of a 15-foot easement that traverses the western edge of lot 110 of Picknew Manor. I'll entertain a motion for the second reading of bill number 24-24. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Miller, second by Alderman Romaker. Bill number 24-24, an ordinance of the City of Warrington, Missouri, providing for the release and vacation of the eastern five feet of a 15-foot easement that traverses the western edge of Lot 110 of Pinckney Manor. We'll call vote. Alderman Cullum? Yes. Alderman Romaker? Yes. Alderman Miller? Yes. Alderman Scholes? Yes. Alderman Crump? Yes. Alderman Quarter? Yes. Bill passes 6 to 0. I will entertain a motion to close the regular Board of Alderman meeting and go into executive session for legal counsel and real estate. Okay. Motion made by Alderman Schultz. Second by Alderman Cullum. Roll call vote. Alderman Romaker? Yes. Alderman Miller? Yes. Alderman Scholes? Yes. Alderman Crump? Yes. Alderman Quarter? Yes. Alderman Cullum? Yes. Motion passes 6-0. We are so adjourned. Thank you, folks, for coming and seeing us. Thank you.